Okay, plenty of political noise on the streets may have overshadowed President Buhari's signature on the new federal competition and consumer protection law, which he signed on Wednesday. It was one major economic law that he signed on paper and put into uh, uh, effect. Uh, and that is one big story that we cannot afford to let go, despite the very big political atmosphere and elections countdown that we're currently in. So let's get a bit of a sense of how this new competition and consumer protection law will be or could be a game changer for Nigeria's business sector and in the best interest of consumers. The Director General of the Consumer Protection Council, Babatsunode Irukera, is live to us now from Abuja Studios and is taking us through what this new law would mean. Uh, Mr. Director General, thank you very much. Good morning. We, it's good to have you here on the program. Good morning. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Uh, this is uh, one new law, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Bill, which the President signed into law on Wednesday. And I'm sure, uh, perhaps aside, Mr. President, you will be the guy who is happy to see this uh, law now passed on. Indeed, that is correct. Uh, we're happy that uh, finally Nigeria has joined the League of Countries with uh, appropriate uh, framework and regime for protecting consumers and even business-to-business -business, uh, protection with respect to competition. Yes, you're very happy. So now the ball is in your court. Uh, Mr. Director General, how would you proceed from here at CPC? Well, I think the ball is in the court of the agency and because the Consumer Protection Council becomes the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. And obviously, it materially changes the structure of the organization. It expands the scope of its work and um, requires a whole lot more from the organization. Uh, two key things. First, uh, with respect to the consumer protection functions of the agency, they're expanded. Uh, the laws are certainly more robust with, um, and clearer, especially uh, regarding uh, better market surveillance and then the enforcement powers of the commission. And then, of course, there's a brand new competition uh, component of that. Now, it doesn't mean that the repealed law of the council as it was, was unable to intervene in anti-competitive issues in the market, but the law was not robust enough. It was quite contentious and uh, it was very difficult. But now uh, it's a lot more clarity. I'm sure uh, your agency had some inputs into uh, this new law. What will make it a game changer, or first on the side of antitrust or competition in Nigeria's business space? Everything, actually. Everything. I mean, uh, from the moment the law came into force, certain uh, conduct that exist and are normal in the market have become prohibited automatically. Uh, from a consumer protection standpoint, there are lots of things that people do that uh, they would be unable to do under the new law. From a competition standpoint, what has become normal business practices has certainly changed. Uh, for instance, discussion about pricing between competitors. That's something that's pretty normal in a, in a space uh, in Nigeria. But now, that's uh, a collusion, and that's criminal, and uh, both criminal for the individuals who discuss the pricing, or, and certainly criminal for the organization with uh, significant penalties for doing that. And um, what is more is that now the law promotes um, a, a level of scrutiny that is important for, for growth, for economic expansion. Because what it does is that what really has constituted uh, market entry barriers will become illegal. And so you're going to find small companies that are able to come into the space and compete with big companies. Many times small companies don't really intend to compete with big companies in every segment of, of, uh, of the product and market. But they just want to carve out their own niche in the market. For instance, you might have a company that makes soft drinks that's really looking to cater to the Lagos market alone but would have significant entry barriers because of the dominant and the big players in that field. And so one of the things a law like this does is that it levels the playing field. It allows 
those smaller companies to also find their footing and find their space and uh, be sustainable and profitable. And so it does several things at the same time. It promotes uh, medium and small scale businesses, obviously uh, promotes employment and uh, profitability. And most of all, it promotes choice and um, standards, innovation, and fair pricing for consumers. Uh, uh, Mr. Rukera, do you think this new <clears throat> competition law is what Nigerian business has been looking for for decades when it comes to this very vexed conversation or discussion about the overbearing influence of international companies coming to Nigeria to do business and pushing Nigeria's uh, indigenous companies almost out of the marketplace. I think you captured it correctly when you say it's something that we have needed for decades. For instance, I'd say to you, um, Nigeria is the only country in the world that uh, disposed of public assets, the magnitude of what we've done without a competition framework. And um, the suboptimal performance of some of these enterprises that have been disposed in part uh, isn't the result of what were the fundamental errors because there wasn't an appropriate framework. But beyond that, uh, you talk about whether there's a domination by uh, in, uh, multinationals. In reality, it's not just even a, a, a domestic <coughs> against uh, um, foreign. No, it's even a question of competition amongst foreign companies. There are many foreign companies that would wish to enter even even enter the Nigerian market, but have trouble entering the Nigerian market because there are other companies, other multinationals, sometimes even of the same nationality, that have taken a stake and have really staked out the entire market and are not doing anything illegal because there's no law that prohibits some of the conduct. And of course, it also constitutes a barrier to uh, startups and small Nigerian companies. And so there are many things are... Uh, competition legislation does, and certainly this one. It would certainly eliminate some of those barriers. There will be more, more business, there will be more jobs, and most of all, consumers would have choices. They will be better served. People will pay more attention to them. The prices would be fairer. And, and, and a World Bank report recently identified some of the competition problems in Africa. For instance, um, African the, the food, staple food, about 10 consumer food items like flour, rice, wheat, are approximately 24% more expensive in African cities than they are in other cities. The only reason is there's a lack of competition. And so if you're able to appropriately regulate those markets and just reduce food prices, staple food prices, by 10%, I mean, in about three or four countries in East Africa, I think Zambia, Kenya, I can't remember the other two now, you would take... 500,000 people out of poverty. So imagine what kind of scale that will be in a country like Nigeria with, with proper regulation. If you look at transport and telecommunications, um, in Africa, 40% 40 uh, 40 of Africa have a single operator controlling the telecommunications or the transport market. And to imagine that Africa still has one of the lowest broadband penetrations, yet the highest cost for broadband in the world. So if you look at a bunch of things, you see that it's really about what disposable income people have and satisfaction in the choices they make with respect to consumption. And if you look at those two things, that's what economy, those are, those are key indicators of an economy. I was listening to you a few minutes ago and you were talking about coming back with a consumer index because you know that those are indicators of measuring how well an economy is doing. And consumer spending is a fu function of two things, satisfaction and disposable income. And so a competition uh, a regulatory system would certainly address both of those. And one key thing that uh, this legislation also does, it, it creates a judicial track for resolving um, competition issues and then consumer complaints. And, and, and that is really a game changer for the market. Just the fact that that framework exists is something that creates self-regulation and makes companies and operators far more responsible. And then obviously it also creates the channel for consumers also, and other businesses. I suspect that the vast majority of commercial disputes in the competition area would be business to business, not necessarily consumer to businesses. And having a tribunal that is dedicated to that creates the, uh, a fast-track judicial system. Secondly, it also ensures that you're getting people 
who are specialized in that <coughs> area to address those disputes? Um, you, you've given us a very a broad view of what will be done. But again, uh, you issued a press statement on Wednesday, uh, Mr. Director General, a four paragraph and the last paragraph, uh, the shortest one you says, that we at the Consumer Protection Council will engage every tool and provision in this new law and any order enactment for the protection of consumers to ensure fair treatment and respect for Nigerian customers. Do you think this new competition law will make you have some kind of handshake, as it were, with other uh, uh, MDAs, for example, agencies, perhaps the Securities and Exchange Commission, when it comes to competition and issues between companies? Who will you be working with across the uh, parastatals and, and other government agencies to make this work? I think what the law does is just uh, reinforces what the uh, ongoing relationships really are. Uh, the CPC already collaborates with sector regulators, and we will continue to, to do that. As a matter of fact, there are provisions in the law that require uh, the commission, as it were, to immediately start negotiating memoranda of understanding with the other sector regulators, whether it's the CBN for financial institutions, NCC for telecommunications, the Civil Aviation Authority for aviation, NERC for electricity, and all the other, and of course, uh, the SEC for um, securities. And, and, and so we would um, enter into these uh, um, understandings and so that there is a clarity of how we collaborate and, and, and how we do this, because sector regulators also understand how their sectors operate far more and they know exactly what are the key issues there and so uh, while a competition regulator would set thresholds and seek to enforce those thresholds exceptions to the thresholds and even setting the thresholds would be most empirical and far more um, uh, effective when it's a collaboration with the sector regulator who understands that sector better yeah, my question, of course, I'm sure you know where my question was heading because before you start having uh, some, uh, some brushes, as it were, I don't want to call it collision, but at least some brushes with other uh, sector agencies who believe that, well, uh, Mr. Rukera now has a law that seems to uh, uh, put his finger in their own cup of tea uh, and that of all that, so to prevent that from happening. That's, where my, that's my point. Well, I, and, and, and it's a very important point, but um, overlapping regulatory jurisdiction between regulators is not something new. It's not an error, I mean, and it's certainly not an accident. As a matter of fact, it's a regulatory design, and most countries adopt that approach where there are overlaps. And what usually would happen is that each agency would bring what their strengths are to the table so that you have a far more robust uh, regulatory environment. And I suspect that the law is what? Uh, the law is ink and paper. Ultimately, it comes down to people who implement or enforce the law. I think the relationships that we have now are pretty good, and um, what can help is all parties, whether it's the ministries, the regulators, certainly the federal government, even the judicial process, to adopt uh, a collaborative approach to interpretation of the statutes across the board and encourage the regulators to work together. And I, I don't think that that's going to be difficult at all. Okay. Do you think this uh, a piece of uh, law is enabling and you can hit the ground, uh, Mr. Director General, from today making it work? Or do you want any other thing to be done at the executive to, level? To, to, there's a lot of work to um, executing all the mandate in the legislation. But yes, it's law and it's effective from the date uh, it was signed. So we have a new law. We have some internal capacity within the Consumer Protection Council for enforcement. And I mean, as it were, we've been doing a lot of consumer protection work. So in that space, whatever the new pieces or the additional tools that are created by this law, we know exactly how to deploy them. Then with the sector regulators, some of them have been doing some of this type of work also. There's competition uh, regulation within the um, telecommunications industry. And SEC has been doing uh, major control to some extent, especially with respect to public companies. And so there are pockets of uh, capacity in different places. And what I expect the commission to do is to leverage on what these uh, um, tools and all these uh, capacity are in different places to at least begin to 
operate while at the same time building and expanding its own capacity. Uh, would this legislation, uh, Mr. Rukera, will have anything to do with the public enterprises? Oh, without a question. I mean, as it were, uh, any disposition of public enterprise uh, pursuant uh, from the date this law has become in force would have to be considered in the light of what the law says. Previous dispositions were, also con were always considered in, in the light of what the existing laws were because the government would not sell enterprise in a violation of law. And so um, now that you have a competition legislation, what would happen is that if you're selling public enterprise, you're going to have to consider whether the model or the approach that you're seeking to adopt is a violation of any other law. For instance, I believe that if we had this law many years ago in Nigeria, the manner in which the... Um, electricity companies were sold might have potentially been different because there have been a law that uh, prohibits uh, uh, some of what we see have become problems in the industry. So you think uh, this is one law that the BPE, for example, and the National Council on Privatization will be looking into very closely or will be used? Without question. Without question. And as a matter of fact, the um, BPE was the initial promoter of uh, competition legislation from as far back as, uh, I think it was 1999, uh, that the BPE started. And so what we're seeing now is really just uh, the outcome of the uh, hard work of the many pieces that always recognize the importance of this legislation. Okay, uh, a final one, but again, you talk about capacity within the CPC. What more would you like to uh, get on your side to get uh, hit the ground running? Of course, you have backlog of issues to deal with when it comes to consumer protection in Nigeria, now you've gotten uh, much more. To whom much is given, much is expected, Mr. Director General. So I'm sure you'll be putting your, your staff to task. Will they need new training? Will they need new skills? What would they be needing uh, to put some teeth into this legislation? Well, we've been having conversations about this for quite a while. Um, and one thing the federal government would have to do is uh, in addition to tasking whatever leadership it ultimately agrees to lead this um, commission it would also have to uh, resource the organization in a manner that truly reflects the expectations of the organization when i say resource i'm not talking just monetarily but um, providing the training and the appropriate access and channels for us to develop the regulatory framework and certainly um, to understand what the federal government's uh, uh, policy approach to competition is. And I think that those are some of the things that uh, would be very critical to how well the um, agency is able to discharge the responsibilities. But we have been having internal conversations and uh, some basic engagement and training on the scope and the uh, um, the way competition law behaves, including certain provisions in what was then a draft bill. So there's some readiness, uh, but yes, uh, we have to scale up uh, very rapidly. Uh, uh, Director General of the Consumer Protection Council, Mr. Abatude Rukera, thank you very much for your time uh, speaking to us. Bright and early, your first television interview since President Buhari signed this uh, new Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act of 2019 into law just on Wednesday. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. And we'll check in with your regency uh, in the weeks and months ahead to find out how you're moving along implementing the new law. Thank okay. you. That's your new Federal Competition uh, and Consumer Protection Law giving more powers to the CPC to do a lot more on the business and economic front. When we return after the break, we're checking with the markets. It's been very nice, isn't it? Yesterday, the stock market returned about $230 billion into investors' portfolio, bringing the market index north of 31000 breaking that ceiling. Then we have Friday, just as everyone here in my city, in your city, Lagos, if you live here, is getting ready for the bit of a disruption tomorrow. The big political heavyweights are stepping into the city, and when they come in, the rest of us will feel a bit of that. But this is your market ahead of the earnings, which we expect to come in, in about two weeks from now, just after the presidential elections. Then all of that will be earnings, earnings, and more earnings. Right after the break, this is your business morning. <laughs>